Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. This morning we are filling the drills because we didn't last night and we're going to finish this field. This is a disaster. I probably did around 300 acres in it last night, so there's only an hour and a half left and Darcy also spent quite a bit of time in this field too. So, that's pretty exciting. We also probably have to fuel the tractor. I'm gonna grab my gloves so I can go up and help. It's really important to wear gloves for safety. You can really tell right here which area burned. That black part up there. So we're still in the burn field. Darcy is filling up over there with seed. We just filled with seed, so now we're filling with fertilizer. We've put 100 hours on this tractor since my dad got it. So that's really awesome. It's a John Deere 9630. And if you haven't seen my new tractor to the farm video, definitely go check it out. And it's pulling a 4350 flex coil implement, which an implement is the drill that puts the seeds in the ground. It's basically like gardening on a big scale because we have seed and fertilizer and we're just planting it in the ground. So this is the fertilizer and we have two fertilizer tanks because we put on 100 pounds of fertilizer an acre and only 63 pounds of wheat. These are the two biggest tanks, the front and back one, and then the middle one holds a little bit less. This is a half a tank of seed. My dad has them shut it off a little early because there's still seed left in the auger and in the hopper, which is that bucket right there. So we wanna make sure we don't overflow the tank. But it doesn't matter as much on fertilizer because we could just shut the auger off for a second with that handle and move it over here. Whereas seed, we just have this one seed tank and we usually don't want to put any seed in the fertilizer tank. So Austin just shut the little door at the bottom of the truck so that no more fertilizer goes into the hopper and then he's going to shake the bucket a little bit to get the rest out after we fill this tank. I'm going to shut the seed tank lid now. You have to make sure to put weight on the front of the tank so it seals and pressurizes, otherwise the air won't push the seed through these hoses into the ground. Now I make sure that it's fully closed because if it isn't, there will be no seed going into the ground and it may or may not notify you. So I always double check all the tanks. We want the fertilizer to flow out of the truck evenly so that there's not a lot on the front and none on the bottom or none at the top and a lot on the bottom. So we can tell how full it is. Well, you can't dip it up too much more than it'll flow out lovely. So my center tank, I'll get 60 acres out of when it's full. Well, that's what you got last time, you could run the center tank out, right? Yeah. You had 64 acres. How many acres do you think I would get out of that tank? Barely enough to get your seed out. Well, I don't know. I mean, you're gonna get about 100 out of this one. Oh, wow. My dad just indicated to Austin that he should move the box of the truck up a little bit more so that it levels out. And that makes it a lot easier so we can tell. What's easier on the front end of the truck that it's not carrying all the weight in front of the box. Yeah. So when you get in there, zero your acres out again. Yes? Yep, I will. There's no point because I think we had one more pass with it, which would have brought it to about 154. So it finally wiggled itself into where it'll stay down on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Go ahead. Is that full or not? Yeah, I'd say that's full. You get all the fertilizer off the seal so it will close. Okay. Step on the edge of the tank. Has to fit in that little holder right there. Oh wow, the auger, the little thing that sets in the ground made a huge hole right there. And then we usually like to spread that fertilizer out. Now we're going to check if any boots are plugged. So I go in here. Right now, this shows what hydraulics are on. I'm going to turn the auger off and I'm going to turn the fan on. You can see that there, rev it up a bit. That's my fan RPM, I wanna make sure it's there. Then I'm going to spool it, so let some seed and fertilizer out. One, two, three, 
four, then turn that off, then idle the tractor back down. Now I'm going to see if any boots are plugged. So you usually start in the middle here. These hoses come from the seed and fertilizer tank and go up to there and then get taken by these hoses to each individual shank. This part of the drill is the shank and this is the boot. So it looks like all those are good. You wanna make sure to check every single one because they're all very important. Uncle Chris says a great way to remember the boot, the difference between the boot and the shank is the boot is on the bottom and the shank is like your leg. Do I have a plug one? Ooh, a hose came off. Most of the time your, your plug boot's gonna be on the end where you back your drills up because it's a mistake somehow. Is this count as the end? No. I don't see any seed out of. So all these are plugged, Kate, every one. Ooh. So you must have turned around. I think I know exactly the turn I did yeah, it. I know, but you need to run this. The problem is you don't know how many passes in you were. You um, cannot do this. Okay. Because you might have a whole section of drill that didn't get seeded throughout this whole field. I think it was, no, it wasn't, it would have been these two passes within these two. Okay. What happened was I turned around and I thought I had brought the hydraulic all the way up and I you didn't. You have to look them up and look them down. That's the whole deal with this. Because this is a disaster, is what this is. We don't seem to be getting any air. Okay, it's this pod right here, the whole pod. Okay. If you look, you see that. This is your end chain. And this is your next pod, and that starts there. Okay. So I don't know if it's this or or something in the drill. We have to look now. Yeah, so do I just pick it out with the... With the screwdriver. Dig it out so you can't get anything else. Of that one, but not that one. It might not even be your fault. Please. I think I got it all out of them. Is that from my turn? So how did, how does that happen? You stop the air from coming out of the boots. It keeps dumping in the hose. It can't get out. It fills up the hose and nothing comes out. It's gonna happen way back. I just hope it only happened down here soon. I never out. shut the fan off though, it was always running. I know, but if you plug the boots and it can't push air out anymore, then it can't move seed, but the seed keeps coming in until it, you know, it fills up the tube. We gotta go get the little motor, find the vacuum, get some long hose to tape on it, 40 feet of plowing up good wheat, which this wheat ain't growing yet, that would be the time to, to fix it. But we yeah. don't know when, that's the problem. So, I hope it was on that one turn. Yeah, I hope it was too, but we don't know. And that's why from now on, when you lift that drill, you look. When you put it back in, I look. Right. And I do look every time. I made a mistake. And this is my spray time. Cool mornings, the wind not blowing real hard, you know. Mm -hmm. I loaded up my spare so I could just leave, but no, I gotta go get the vacuum and the motor and the hose and the duct tape to tape the hose to the hose. And, and yeah, but it isn't like I couldn't have, Chris couldn't have done it. You know, it's why you turn yourself into a robot when you're driving these things. It becomes natural. Yes, automatic. You really don't have any flat tip screwdrivers. This is the part that takes the seed from the tank into these hoses that run down to the pods with the smaller hoses that go into the shank and drop out the boot. So you're coming up this side, but when you were going down, it was this side. So right here, if you don't got seed, then you weren't seeding here. But seed and fertilizer are hard to find on its best day. So this is probably your next pass here. I don't know that. But. Oh, yay! Eureka, okay? <laughs> We've got a seed and fertilizer geyser. That's exactly right. So I plugged one of the big hoses. You plugged the pod. Get in there and dig that out. Okay. We need a... Uh, yeah, they made this too short. Now go underneath and work the bottom. I think it's out. Chris, you got a uh, hose clamp? 
Okay, let me see if I got one. We might have to cut a longer hose for this. Now I have to crawl back out of here. I look at the hoses every single time. I mean, these here. Yeah, those hoses. I think we had to just drive back and dig a little bit and see. She thinks it wasn't very far, but. Well, that one turn, I don't know when if it plugged up before that. This is the end of the drill right here. There was one extra one to pick up after the three. I had to turn around to do one part this way. I'll go down and see if I can figure this out down here, but I'm just, I was more worried about this because I don't think you probably, you didn't have any turnaround problems here, do you think? Where? In the... Yeah, you thought it was on this yeah, side. Yeah, I know I had a turnaround problem here, but obviously... It wasn't here. It was over there. Well, no, I didn't have... On this side, I know I didn't have any turn... That I noticed. But on the ends, it could have happened. I, I... Them in, you left them in the ground when you turned around sometimes, right? No. Well, yeah. If there's pulls, pulls take precedence over everything. <laughs> We would have already been done with the field if I hadn't done this. Back in the, in the honorable thing. Stop, get out, crawl around and make sure. All these cows came running in to drink water at the reservoir. So that's kind of crazy. We don't know whose cows they are. 